Today's objective is rational number classification. Think of the numbers that you naturally count with. If you were counting the people in line or something, you would go one, two, three, four, etc. Well, that's what you naturally begin with, and these numbers are called the natural numbers. They're sometimes also in younger grades called counting numbers, but now I want you to think of them as the natural numbers, because how do you naturally start counting? All right, one, two, three, four, to infinity. Now, if you were only going to add one number to this group, what would you add? How about zero? Okay, because zero, that would be nobody's in line. How many people are in line? There's nobody in line. So adding zero, and I always put the line through, through it so you know it's not the letter O, gives you the group called whole numbers. And I remember that because the word whole has an O in the middle, which is kind of like a zero. So now natural numbers are one, two, three, four to infinity. Whole numbers are zero. 1, 2, 3, 4 to infinity, okay? With what if we add the opposites of these numbers? The opposites of 0, 1, 2, 3, 4. Okay, well, not 0. What would, do you remember what that group is called? Hopefully you said integers. So integers start from negative infinity negative 3, negative 2, negative 1, 0, 1, 2, 3, and go on to infinity. What are some other numbers that you know and use that we haven't included yet? Did you say decimals and fractions because they're your absolute favorite? That's what I was thinking of. Hopefully you said decimals and fractions. This new group, the integers and the fractions and most decimals, I'll go into what, why it's only most on the next page. So I mean positive and negative fractions and decimals. Integers, positive and negative fractions and decimals are called rational numbers. Okay? So we have four groups. Natural numbers, whole numbers, integers, and rational numbers. Now we're going to draw it on the next page. Okay. So basically, we have one little group, natural numbers, one, two, three, four. If you include all the natural numbers and just add a zero, they're whole numbers. You just add a zero. So now you have zero, one, two, three, four. So all the natural numbers are included in the whole numbers. Now you can add the opposites. Negative three, negative two, negative one, zero, one, two, three. If you include all that, notice it includes your natural numbers, your whole numbers. Those are all included in integers. Okay, now if we add positives and negative fractions, positive and negative decimals that terminate, and positive and negative decimals that repeat, those are now, so we have our, our integers, positive and negative fractions, most decimals if they terminate or repeat, those are all rational numbers. Some examples, what I mean with the fractions, you could have one third, that's a repeating decimal, one-half, same as 0.5, negative two-fifths, negative one-ninth, remember that's a repeating decimal, negative 0 0.5, 0 0.6 repeating. All decimals that terminate, which means end if you do it on the calculator, or repeat are rational numbers. The only other decimals you have are decimals that do not repeat or do not end. Those are called irrational numbers. For example, pi. 3.14159, it goes forever, and they haven't been able to find a repeat. Or non-perfect square roots, such as the square root of 3, the square root of 7, the square root of 12. Those are your irrational numbers. And rational numbers plus irrational numbers, they make up your real number system. That may lead you to ask, is there a non-real number system? Well, yes, there are imaginary numbers, but you don't do those until 10th grade, okay? Algebra 2. Other stuff to remember, perfect squares. That's when an, uh, the square root of something times itself. So the square root of 4 is 2, because 2 times 2 is 4. The square root of 9 is 3, because 3 times 3 is 9. You can have the square root of 16 is 4, the square root of 25 is 5, etc. If you look at a multiplication table, those are the numbers, the perfect squares, those are the ones that go down the diagonal because it would be 3 times 3, 4 times 4, 5 times 5, okay? 
So remember, perfect squares, we those end up being um, natural numbers, right, or whole numbers. And remember, repeating decimals have a denominator of 9 or 99, et cetera, not 10 like most decimals do. So 0 0.3 repeating 3 ninths, oh, I can simplify that, 1 third. 0 0.7 repeating, just 7 ninths, can't simplify. 0 0.15 repeating would be 1 5, 1 5, 1 5, 1 5. 15 over 99, but I can divide both of those by 3 and get 5 over 33. And that's it.